testing. Testing. All right. Now it is my utmost hope that this is recording to YouTube. Uh, I won't know until I play it back because my computer is all the way over there. <laughs> but, eh, we're gonna, so I'm a little bit smaller, but I have a few tricks, especially um, for the sermon. So if I hit this button and tell it to move the other direction, so it's going to point at me. Ish. I'll let it move a little bit further. Okay, and then... Zooming in away from me. Okay. Still... See if I can get it to move further to the right. I really hope this is amusing to folks. <laughs> um, hopefully this will be smoother on Sunday, but it's, it's fun to play with. One of the things I may try next um, is to put my big microphone that's right in front of me. Oh, yay. <laughs> it stopped. Um, in the middle and then to use the sound system in the sanctuary. And hopefully what that will do is that this microphone will pick it up for the internet, but that when they're in the hypothetical future, when there are people in the sanctuary, the sound system will be available for them um, because this microphone in front of me is only useful to the people who are listening online. Uh, otherwise, they might have to shout which is not good for trying to stop the spread of particulates. So, anyway, now let me try the zoom feature here. So, I'm gonna be smaller for the sermon, but one of the uh, fun things that we can do is, because I'm smaller, I can do one of these fancy things where I'm the big piece and then the slides will be smaller, but I can make those a little bit bigger on the screen so you can still see me a bit more and have the slides kind of recessed, which would be a little bit more like if you were here in person and we had a projector screen down. 
Um, and I think uh, I have a fancy little thing that, that creates a, a second slide. It occurs to me, oh, I think, I think my mouse is connecting over there. There it is. Yes. Ooh. And so I can change the slides. Of course, I know you can't read them right now. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> I will make them bigger. Um, you know, and then I can always still do this um, so that we can see the whole thing. Um, the other fun thing I could do is even, you know, have a picture of the Bible page that overlays right next to me. So those are options. The one thing that's going to be different is when I share the slides on Zoom, like this, we come to the song. Um, if I play this, the audio won't come through because um, it's not playing the audio from my computer. It's playing um, the audio that's attached to um, my device over here. So what I would do instead, and this is going to be a totally different hymn, is tap a little thing on my screen. Remember to turn on my microphone. So I know the sound is coming through a little glitchy. Um, part of that, we still haven't added the third extender in here. And, and that should help connect my iPad that's right here with the computer across the room. Um, the other thing I'm thinking is I'm also, in the next couple of weeks, waiting on another device um, where it would be easier for me to change the slides um, from where I'm at and then I wouldn't have to have the separate screen over there and, and all of that and that might make it easier for me to run zoom and, and things um, 
And then, of course, in that great future when we will be able to gather together, I will have more people in the room. And as complicated as a lot of this technology is, um, and I'm sure I will still be running the bulk of it, there are a few things where largely what I will just need is someone to push a button at the right time where I wouldn't be able to, um, depending on whatever I've got going on, you know, trying to, you know, lift the elements and, and preach and all of that. And my hope is that some of you will be willing to, to, um, to push a button. Um, and so that's, that's the big thing. There are a lot of things I am finding that um, you are always a million times easier with volunteers, but that um, pastors could be a little bit more capable um, to, for instance, even be able to change the slides during worship. Maybe not um, as, as we've seen with the hymns, um, if I'm not familiar with the song, it's a lot better to have someone a little bit better versed in terms of me reading music to change them. And of course, Daniel can't do that um, while he's playing the piano. <laughs> um, but you know, some of that stuff we can we can work out. But there are a few things where um, just because you decide to volunteer X number of Sundays to push the button to change the slides doesn't mean you have to be stuck in it. Occasionally I can pick it up um, if you need a Sunday off and hopefully we can make it look as easy as possible so that anybody can do it. Um, because really the big thing is usually pushing one button to, to tell it to go to the next thing. And of course sometimes if the slides are out of order or something then the person operating it might feel embarrassed uh, that they did something wrong, but in general, um, that is not their fault. That is um, probably the pastor or whoever put it together. Um, so I think there are ways that we can make it doable to have volunteers, and that would take something off my plate. And yet at the same time, because I've become capable of doing it um, while I'm moving, um, you know, it's something that I I would still be capable of doing. Um, and then the other thing is, is, you know, just having readers up here in person take something off of me right now because um, even when I have readers uh, when we're on Zoom, uh, I, I'm still doing more than we would normally do if we had a liturgist. So that's just something to, to think about is that once, you know, more than more than me is in the sanctuary hopefully um some of this becomes a little bit easier um it has occurred to me that often you know back in the day sometimes showing up for worship when you're the preacher is you know you read your part that was preset earlier in the week that um whether the pastor wrote it or whether you pulled from an old liturgy that that you normally have it's still um, it's still less effort <laughs> than, than what I'm doing in terms of, of putting together a service now where I'm, I'm doing and reading everything and I'm on the whole time. Whereas, you know, back in February when I started, we were still kind of operating under the old, the format that you all had set up. And I would, um, you know, show up read my prayers, maybe do, you know, an ad-libbed uh, prayer of the day or something. Um, but we had a, a liturgist who did their part. We had a scripture reader who did their part and I would preach and do a benediction and be done. Um, but that in between the bits where I needed to stand up and be in front of everyone, I was sitting down in the pews with everyone else. And so um, just the imagine, imagining of having people in the room again um, feels nice. And you may wonder, you know, does Daniel help or when um, he, is, he is great at moral support, but a commitment I made for myself, um, but offered to him 
is, is that pastors' spouses often do a lot of unpaid labor. There are a lot of things that they're expected to do. Um, when I worked at another church, uh, we were interviewing interim pastors. And I remember one of them put in his personal information form, which is like his resume or his uh, application, uh, that his wife would run children's ministries and it was like a two for one deal. And as a working woman in this field, um, that just, oh, it, 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 it made me angry um, to, to offer her free labor, um, as, as part of a reason to hire him. Uh, and so, uh, you know, particularly as I thought about what the role of my family would be, whether we have children or not, or, or anything, I wanted to, there to be a boundary that anything that Daniel does um, was completely his own choice and not um, because he was a pastor's spouse. And so um, and any of that that he has done in terms of um, you know, sharing with us about the, the need for diapers and the volunteer work, that is, those are things that he has done because he has felt called to do those things. Um, and actually part of the reason why you don't see him often on Sunday mornings is that he's also part of a um, men's hour to gather and talk about their emotions and their issues and, and ways that they can be better feminists and support the women in their lives. And so um, that is something that I have um, blessed and encouraged. Um, but because it does happen at the same time as worship, um, that's why you, you don't often see him. So, um, you know, anything he can do to, you know, talk about how he can better support me, um, <laughs> it's great. So anyway, so, but otherwise, you know, I might be um, stealing him to help me in terms of cameraman stuff and whatnot, but I have found some fun gadgets to play with. So another thing I wanted to test out, I've got to turn on my auto pan. Okay, and then we want to go the other direction. Come on, there we go. Okay, now it's going to pan toward the communion table, which it should be centered on, so it should the zoom should work a little bit better than um, it did for sermonizing. went a little bit too far. Let's go this way. Okay, and so I'm going to move. So Sunday worship might take a little bit longer because we won't be doing easy transitions, but it's a little bit more like normal worship where you have to wait for me to walk to the next place. So I think we'll be okay with that. Um, you know, we don't normally have to wait for a camera to pan in the correct direction, but um, we can deal. <laughs> All right, so you can see me here, and that's fun. Um, my signal is better here, um, in case Jeannie is watching. It must just be the pulpit. <laughs> I almost wonder if it, maybe we put that maybe in the 
what would we call that space? The nave, um, the communion preparation space. Um, maybe that would put the pulpit back in the uh, network. Because the device is the, for, for those who have watched this long, there's a little, the little door there where you can put out the communion elements there. Um, that is where one of the extenders is. And I think that has something to do with why I think the pulpit is just sort of cut off in that line. Um, like it's trying to make a line back to the office somehow. So, um, there are options. There are actually a lot of outlets. So there are a lot of outlets out where people are seated, out, out that way, right? But there aren't very many up here, um, which is surprising because this is probably the space where we need to plug the most things in. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, I can do communion on Sunday. Um, I bet you never thought you'd see a mouse um, on the communion table, but here we are. Um, especially a, com a computer mouse. You might, you know, expect to see a normal mouse going after crumbs or something. All right. It's the prayer of confession. I've got to stand over here if I do, if I have that. I'll have to play with some of, some of these things because I will want to do communion right here. <laughs> um, I think I can make that... So we can also do, and I could probably put, I'd only be able to use half a slide, but I think I could work with that. I'm sort of curious about the lighting. I guess I'll have to look when I play it back. I do have a big ring light, but it's far back there. Um, the other thing I need to talk to Oscar about is there are two lights right here that are off. And I think the switch that might go to them, so they're probably burnt out. I think the switch that might go to them is listed as the altar lights. So that would probably be a little bit better lighting for me doing communion right here. Um, playing with things. <laughs> At the very least, I am hearing, so my earbuds are connected to my laptop. So this should be my computer audio, so this should be what people are hearing. I'm just extra anxious at this juncture um, about whether or not um, that's actually connecting through to YouTube. And actually, as I'm looking at the screen on my laptop, it is frozen on me in the pulpit. And I'm at the communion table. So that's a problem. Okay.
Okay. We are back. That freezing thing is not ideal. Looking over there and it's okay. It's a little glitchy with the screen. But the audio seems to be coming through smooth. If it's coming through over there at all. So we'll see what that uh, that sounds like when I get to YouTube. It's a bit frustrating. <laughs> wow. See if I can move. Come on. Yeah. There we go. Okay, the call to worship. So it's going backwards now. Nope, I don't want you to play this song. Come on. Hello. I can see things a little bit better from right here, which is helpful. There's the scripture. Your screen is still trying to catch up a little bit. My audio might end up being ahead of the video, which is not ideal. Um, What I might end up suggesting we do is a Saturday evening live service um, in which I use my fancy software, stream it to YouTube live so people can watch it live if they want to, but then Sunday morning um, we then just play it play the same service but play it again over zoom and what will happen then is that i think how to do this um folks can still watch it together or uh, participate in worship together um, for that service and then we'll still do virtual coffee hour afterwards. And what can happen um, with that is that if you did watch it the night before but still want to participate in virtual coffee hour, um, you might just join us for virtual coffee hour at 1030. Um, you know, and depending on how long the service goes or if it ran late or something, you might still, you know, arrive on Zoom um, toward the end of the service, but uh, that's still okay. And then uh, then we can kind of join together. And I think that might end up being uh, a, a better compromise for when we do in-person stuff. Um, just because this the software does make it handier um, for me to record, for me to do some live things, to include the liturgy, to um, to be able to, to zoom in and to, um, it's not responsible for panning the camera, that's another fancy little device, but um, it, it's still, uh, I can't, I can't do the zoom feature with any, any other fancy thing, um, just with this software, which is nice. So, you know, if I go back to just this screen and then zoom out and you can see the front of the sanctuary, um, just like you would if you were here in the building. I think that's a big deal. And so that, yeah, 
Um, I wish this software worked better with Zoom. Um, and that there are a number of things happening right now. Not only um, uh, so the software I'm using is connecting my iPad, my iPhone, my la and my laptop. So it's running all of that. Then it's sending all of that to Zoom. And then Zoom is sending that to YouTube. And our Wi-Fi is having to use all of that strain. And that's one thing on Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. But it's another thing Sunday morning at 9.30 when everyone in the world is using the internet to, to join in worship. And then at about 10 o'clock, Scattering Seeds will be in our parking lot. Also using the internet, probably, I don't, um, Josie may be able to correct me or something. I don't think they even have the new internet information. I think they've been using um, probably a wireless data plan or, or something like that, streaming from a, a cell phone. So I don't think they're directly connected to our network specifically, but I do think they have something else um, connected or going on. So, um, yeah, there is that. I'm going to see how well this is still connected. Just playing with different options. Um, multi views. Hmm. Do want split screen, but that can I move separator position? Okay, so we can do, so that would mean hypothetically I could have something at the bottom there. Yeah. So that's cool. If I have to do this first solo, and then I can zoom in. Okay. Go A, B. So I can put the words at the bottom. And then all I have to do is Click through the next slide. Okay. I'm going to actually just exit that. Okay. All right, um, that was something. I'm gonna stop.